Aloha and welcome brothers and sisters of the aquascaping world. This is Stephen Chong from the Tokyo Aquascaping Union and Steve Scapes on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. This is a second of the two part series where I'm going to be talking about my layout from last year, Butterfly Hideaway, which ranked fifth in the International Aquatic Plant Layout Contest and won the most innovative award in the AGA International Contest. Um, so the other video, the first video is about backstory, about my own development as an aquascaper and I um, definitely recommend you go check it out before watching this one. This is going to be more technical. I'm going to jump into the nuts and bolts and technique of putting this aquarium together. Um, I'm not going to make it a habit about talking too much about the how. This layout I mean, this channel is going to be more about the what and why questions in putting a design together. So with that, let's jump right into it. Um, so this is the aquarium. As I mentioned in my um, previous video, there's actually two different concepts that went into this. First of all, I wanted to create a drop down area, like a space that just looked like it could fall down forever and ever and ever, and use that as um, the tension developing element, the contrasting element to a peaceful flat space that would leave my audience with the serenity of nature and appreciation for that type of energy. And if we focus in, you can see um, those two elements working together nicely. Flat, harmonious platform where your eye will eventually be drawn to and the dark crevice that brings out the contrast of that space to its maximum. Now, this layout was inspired by the cenote sinkholes in Mexico, which are you know really interesting type of places. They're like a crater um, where the the ground, the surface ground has like fallen into an underground cavern, giant pool, and you can see nature kind of creeping into it from above. I took inspiration from those types of spaces. Um, some of my earlier illustrations. Right, so this was one of the original drawings that I did in development. Um, you can see that it's just a big hole. And I figured out that, you know, if I cover the foreground and then have a dark space behind that, I can make it look like um, you know, the aquarium falls forever. There's no space be, um, below the aquarium, even though, you know, that's just an illusion. Of course, every aquarium has a bottom. Uh, the original hardscape probably got to that point a little bit more and you know there's people um, friends of mine who think that the original hardscape was better others argue that the final was better we'll never know but um why argue it ranked fifth in the world that's that <laughs> we're done with it we're done with it that's the great thing about a competitive layout when you're done with it and you never have to do it again you can move on to something else though that said, um, a lot of my friends and mentors told me, you know, Stephen, this concept could have been pushed even more. Um, we'd like you to revisit someday. Someday. Not in the near future. Someday. Five, six, seven, eight years down the road from now. But this was the original, I think you, the original hardscape. I think you can really see what I'm going for with this dark hole, just like total drop off. And as I mentioned in the other video, the reason why I didn't go for more of, like a straight on version of this with a hole was that you know if the final viewpoint if the thing that you're going to bring the audience to is a hole then you know there's this dark foreboding sense of anxiety you're not leaving them with an emotional experience beyond that um you can see and also you can see like in the original picture your eye is a bit confused you're not sure if you want to look up you don't if you want to look down it's the same thing which Where's your eye supposed to go in this drawing, up or down? So I think like most will kind of wander around the whole space and you know get confused and kind of end up here. That's not what you want. In a final aquascape, you want pure um, clarity. So and to get that, you can see in a lot of different ways this eye leads you there. There's a vector along here, this line. Of course, the background lines also take you to where you're supposed to go, and you can see even in the uppermost spaces, like this is where small details can really help guys. Like even these roots, even like these jutting pieces of stone, all of them are designed 
with the intention of helping draw the eye to where you want to take it for the final um, part of the layout viewing experience. So um, I mentioned in my earlier um, video what brought me to this idea was I had these forest drawings of another concept that I had where I would bring the viewer into kind of this flat space inspired by the Shiraito uh, Falls in Nagano, the white thread falls of Nagano. But these concepts were kind of boring and flat. It's because everything is flat, right? Everything is just balanced and stable. Um, there's no real drama. There's no real tension. Like even in Iwagumi, the reason why the father stone is tilted is because it, by feeling like it could fall over, there's that sense of drama, a sense of tension. And without it, if everything just sits up straight and neatly laid out, like you see in uh, most untrained layouters work, that's what you'll get. And there's no tension or drama or no fixation into the layout anywhere. That's what you need to avoid. And that's one of the big critiques my teachers had for this series of drawings. Beautiful, but uh, it's normal. But Eventually, I came to this drawing where those two concepts that I had been fighting with like just came together. There was a moment um, you know, I talked more about in the other video where like I was inspired. I reached the idea where, wait, these two concepts that I've been working on, they need to come together because the tension from one and the harmony of the other, like the harmony and peace, peacefulness and stability of this layout is what will give the experience that's needed and can be contrasted against the tension of this idea. They came together in this drawing. You can see here too, um, this is just a rough draft illustration, but I wanted to lead the eye this way along this line or down through these roots. But eventually I would bring the eye to this flat space that you know would give the viewer a sense of relief because um, while fish don't care about weightlessness, fish don't care about falling down a hole, and fish also don't care about being boxed in to a tight crevice or looking out from underneath the ledge, people feel a lot of anxiety when you're in a tight space or when you're faced with a drop-off hole that you could fall off of. But if you give people something to fixate on that's comfortable for them and you add that element of anxiety or drama, then you will come to a work that, you know, just like light and dark contrast each other, anxiety and harmony contrast each other. And when you can bring those two things together, bam, you'll leave a strong emotional impact on the viewer. That's what I was going for. It's um, graphically, and story-wise, it's a closed off space. It's not like a river or another type of, you know, in most waterway types of layouts, there's a natural flow, right? From upstream to downstream or going from one end to the other. But this layout is based on a cenote, which is a sinkhole. It's an enclosed space. There's no flow. Um, there's no direction naturally. Of course, we create direction inside of the work in order to lead the eye. But um, story-wise, it's a closed space. And I really wanted to do that, um, or I did that by you know, framing the space and making that closed off feeling. There's no beyond when it comes to this layout. And it also has to do with the fish choice. Um, I chose to use the Gertrude's butterfly or Gertrude's rainbow fish. Uh, which is, it's not a schooling fish, uh, but it is a small, lightly colored fish that I knew would contrast strongly against the backdrop of black shadow. And I knew the way it swims, it kind of flutters about a cave. And that idea, kind, especially with the name of the fish, Gertrude's butterfly, it, it reminded me actually of, you know, the science... Was it the Museum of Natural Science in San Francisco, I think? There's this display if you go there. It's this huge orb, and you can walk up from the understory all the way to the canopy of 
like the canopy recreation of the rainforest inside this giant sphere. It's really cool. And when you reach the top, there's butterflies floating everywhere um, above the canopy. And that's kind of the idea that stuck with me when making the fish choice for this layout, that I was going to let the Gertrude's butterfly flutter about, you know, naturally within the space, not necessarily schooling in a direction. Wow, wow, like this, like you'd see in a typical layout. Actually, Fukada-san, when he saw my initial draft, he was like, ah, oh, why are the fish just floating there? They're like, uh, wouldn't it have been cooler if they're like, swish, you know, a traditional dramatic rush of fish? And that kind of showing of fish has a very dramatic and powerful impact. Definitely something you should pursue in a layout that has real flow. But again, what's your story? Come back to the story. My story was this enclosed space that has a unique, anxious atmosphere to it, um, deep in a jungle, and I just thought that floating butterflies, this is what I want to show, this is my story, this is my fish, and that's what we did. We got them to flit about in front of the black space and a bit in the white space, so you can kind of see them as like birds in the air or butterflies in the cave, and it's so, I, I like it because the fish don't feel the tension. We feel the tension of gravity. We feel anxious about it, but they don't. And that's, you know, their presence, ignoring gravity, floating above it all, like feeling at home in this um, locked up space that no one else could reach. Um, that is what brought me to the title of Butterfly Hideaway. And that is what ties the story of this layout together. I hope that uh, my sharing, my thoughts for putting together this work have maybe inspired you to think about how to use some of this type of thinking, some of these types of techniques in your own work. And um, please share your work with me. I mentioned in the other video that the way that this con the way that this channel is going to live going forward is not based on content, not based on aquariums that I made, because competitive aquascapers we make one layout a year, maybe two layouts a year. We have the one at home that's dedicated to the IAPLC, that's dedicated to competition, and um, we can't really show it until the grand finale, the final results of the contest. But I want to take what knowledge I've gained, what wisdom I have, and help you guys. So especially newbies, but even veterans, even people who are like, well along the way and serious about the contest. If you'd like me to take a look at your work and see what advice and help I can give and feature it in a video like this, please leave a comment in the um, comment section with a URL to your work. It can be just a picture or it can be a thread in a Facebook group that I'm invited to <laughs> or that's public or you know some other community online. I would love to see what you guys are working on and I would love to give my input if you'll have it. So again, this is Stephen Chong from the Tokyo Aquascaping Union in Japan, as well as in the TAC North American group, the Aquascapers Collective. Go check us out and go check out the other guys in our Facebook groups. And also Steve Scapes on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I definitely recommend following me on all those platforms. And please leave me with threads to your Aquascapes. I'd love to see them. Thank you very much. Aloha.